we are continuing our study in the Gospel of Matthew. We have been talking about the foundation of the kingdom. We are dealing with Matthew chapter 1, verse, chapter 1 to chapter 7. We have talked about the fulfillment. Now we move on to a new section where we are going to deal with family. Our verse today is from Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. The birth of Jesus Christ happened like this. When Mary was engaged to Joseph before their marriage, she was discovered to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. In one verse, we are given a whole lot of detail. To this, we can add what is known about that time and place in regards to marriage. Marriage was, as in most traditional cultures, a big deal back then. I'm afraid that in the church in North America today, that marriage is often not a big deal. The cavalier attitude in our culture towards marriage, you know, if it doesn't work out, well, we can get a divorce sort of thing, is found even in the life of the church. Divorce was practiced in that day and age. Marriages in that day and age also did not always work out as well as intended. What we are getting here is that preparation for marriage was more complex and more important in that day than ours. The act of marriage began with a pledge and commitment to the act of marriage. Now this initial step was deter not determined by the couple getting married. A bride in particular needed the father's blessing. So the first step for setting up, this was the first step for setting up for the marriage. There was an interlude between that initial step and when the actual marriage took place. In that time, the preparation for the setting up of the new home was happening. Whereas in our culture, the focus tends to be on preparations for a wedding. A bride remained in the parents' home until the night of the actual wedding. The couple were not married, but the relationship had the force of marriage. In two ways, the pregnancy of Mary was disgraceful. One is the impact it would have had on Joseph, and in particular, how people viewed Joseph. A betrothed or pledged couple were not to consummate their relationship at this time. The fact that Mary was pregnant would be seen as a usurping of the social order, in particular would speak of Joseph's character as a man. But the pregnancy of Mary was also a disgrace to her parents. In that day and age, homes were small. In a home like this that Mary and Joseph, Mary's parents had, at night you would take any animals you would own and bring them indoors. That was normal. So if you can imagine a tight, closed, close to each other's sort of place, it would be very difficult for an unmarried couple, well, to do things to get pregnant. So for Mary to be pregnant would speak very ill of her father's supervision of her daughter, and ergo speak ill of his character. We tend to minimize in the life of the church the consequence of faith. A genuine faith and a genuine call to faith is one that disrupts family life, social order, and all sorts of other things. It is easy to take the experience of faith and reduce it to a personal thing. It is something that changes me, but does not impact the world around me. The reality is that the practice of faith and the living out of that faith will always have repercussions on the people around us. Look at the people in your church or your community who claim to be Christian. Now step back as it were and look at the world they're in, their family, their neighbors, 
their co-workers. Are those people in some way, shape, or form impacted by that faith? Do they feel that faith on their lives? A faith that is real and genuine upsets the world around us. If the world around anyone is not impacted, then we wonder, then we have to wonder how real the claim to faith is.